Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about the PlayStation Showcase. I'm not going to talk about all the games that were shown and all, all that we got. I'm just going to talk about the stuff that, you know, mainly interested me. So in the description down below, I will include trailers to everything that I'm talking about. But I'll also include time codes. That way you can kind of skip around because probably everything that I was interested in, there's probably only some or maybe none of it uh, that was interesting to me might not be interesting to you first thing on the list i'm going to talk about is uh project eve uh it seems like a really interesting game obviously hearing from other people like you definitely hear like people compare like oh they think very like bayonetta which i've never played any of the bayonetta games and very near automata which i've always been interested in playing near automata just never have i, I really should not i mean since i've had a ps4 for a couple years i should really get on top of that but it's spe specifically like combat wise obviously like the Bayonetta and Nier Automata like comparison I mean even like aesthetically you can definitely see like the Nier Automata um, aesthetic going on but it was kind of interesting to me because it's like obviously Nier Automata at least to my knowledge I mean obviously it probably changes and I, I mean I assume it keeps a little consistent like over the course of the game but it's like that's mainly androids this seems to be like alien species and stuff like that so it is a little bloodier than i kind of would have expected it but i mean so it's like it's almost like that i'm sure like kind of like that bayo slash devil may cry like uh angle to it but um obviously like uh just the aesthetic and stuff like that and just like the combat obviously like kind of like what you consider like a character action game seems uh pretty dope uh obviously we only see like the main character eve aside from like what is essentially probably like the nemesis character that's like oh the the character you see at the very end of the trailer so other than her like, we don't really ever see any other humanoid like androids potentially it's kind of what they are like what it, i mean it seems like it's an alien invasion and they fail to basically save the earth so it's like an apocalypse of like right like maybe most of humanity is dead uh but it's just interesting like i said you saw no other like humanish beings whether it's like androids like her on earth or whatever so i'm curious like are there going to be like any other characters or is it just going to be straight up you interacting with your robot buddy which obviously you can make the near automata uh comparisons in that regard but i mean it just it seemed really interesting from what we saw next up is for spoken uh this is a new square and it's game specifically it's made by the team it's luminous something they're this uh team who made final fantasy 15 which looking at you like oh you could definitely like get the final fantasy like feel and vibe from it especially like with a lot of her movement obviously it's, it's very almost similar to noctis's obviously but his isn't wasn't like the way hers is because like you know, it, it, it's different but you, you get a little bit of that same vibe i was actually kind of surprised by that like the story being like oh she's from like a regular world like ours present day and she gets teleported to a different world which obviously like there's plenty of stories that have done that it just immediately makes me think of this anime i watched a couple years ago called kiba it's a really good anime if you've never seen it i highly re uh, recommend it but uh, like the main character of that series his name is zed he kind of went through similar circumstances he kind of comes from like a very like metropolis type of city to like of like very fantasy like world kind of in a similar vein to this um uh, and it is kiba as in k-i-b-a like the character from naruto if you're familiar like it's spelled like that uh but uh nevertheless uh it was actually pretty dope and i think it's so interesting that um also like that is kind of based around magic like that's her main arsenal which even when she's casting the magic you're like oh you get those like final fan final fantasy like feeling vibe from it uh in that case but um it look i think i think it's interesting because you also make that like also make a near automata uh comparison because it's like um or not just near automata but near in general because she has like the like bracelets on her arm that like are some kind of being that gives her powers it kind of it feels kind of very similar to like near and weiss's relationship from like uh near replicant gestalt whatever the case may be, whatever your bread and butter is in that uh regard but it definitely reminds me of that interestingly enough but i uh, just like the movements and the magic casting i think it's interesting because like i said like that's her main mode of like fighting and so like she like even summons like swords and stuff like that which i'm curious like maybe as the spells advance like you get like different weaponry like melee combat because we do see like the antagonist at the end like at one point she's attacking the protagonist and like her like magic kind of manifests as like an axe but we mainly saw the protagonist use like a sword so i'm curious like is that the axe is going to be like your more heavy like guard break or something like that whereas like the swords typically might be like your faster ones but i mean it seems fast in certain regards but obviously like there's like the powerful jump slash that comes down so it's like i'm curious to see like the full mechanics but also like just the the movement just the game in general just looks like beautiful so 
you know, once again, I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy 15, so like more from that like team that made that, I'm all about that. So uh, we are seeing like other NPCs and stuff like that. So I'm curious to see like, like I said, it's kind of very like that. Um, Cause they did bring up like, oh, this is kind of like Earth, but not really. So I'm like, I guess it's like a parallel Earth or something like that. Um, I'm curious like what their like full blown explanation for that is like, you know, but she's kind of like the chosen hero story, but I do like the whole like, oh my gosh, she's tripping out like, oh my God, did I just do that with my mind? This is amazing. I like characters being able to just like, oh my God, what I just did was sick. I, I like that as kind of a character trait. We also have Ghostwire Tokyo, which is really interesting. This is made by the same team who made the Evil Within games, which is pretty dope. Uh, we've seen, uh this be showcased before but obviously it's getting showcased again uh once again it's just it's so interesting um we get a better like view of certain things because i think this is our first time ever really getting a look at the main protagonist because it is like a first person game it's not like a it's a, almost an fps but it's like a first person magic uh game to a certain extent because um you do hand signs which immediately my brain you know me being the nerd that i am goes like oh naruto but also like i know like i've watched enough like anime stuff about like priest and like um uh exorcists who do like hand signs to, like uh banished demons and stuff like that and it's kind of something in that similar vein but uh i like the interesting ghost designs um the main protagonist at one point you see something with his eye that's kind of like like a dark shadows over it. and i'm like is that what is that what's kind of leading to him having these powers is that like how he's able to see these spirits or something because there's moments throughout the trailers sometimes he'll have it and sometimes he won't so i'm wondering is it like only activated when he's in those modes of like oh i'm like dealing i'm in a dangerous zone where spirits around so maybe that's only like it's a weird comparison to make once again naruto but it's kind of like maybe like a shotting gun or like byakugan thing like it activates but then maybe this is only like in the presence of like enemies it activates after that it goes in passive like, mode where it's not activated i don't know uh but just like from what we've seen before and just getting more of it this time it just re looks really interesting like i'm not the biggest like fps person but obviously this is it's just something a little different it's a little weird a little spooky so understanding like all that's going on because the dude in the mask seems to be like the orchestrator for what purpose I don't know. It seems like it's, he's also going after someone that's important to the main protagonist, either just to taunt him or whether it's like a, no, nah, this is, um, this person's important to my plans because I think the main character says like Mari or something like that, calling out to her. So it's like, what that's all about. It just, it seems like a really interesting, it's, like I said, especially coming from the guys, uh, the people who made uh, the Evil Within game. So that's, that's pretty dope. Uh, the next game, I'm probably going to butcher uh, the title because I'm just going to say like Chia. Uh, it just, it seems like a cute little game. It's very, like, pretty. Obviously, art style-wise, it reminds me of, uh, uh, Wind Waker. Um, even though I've never played it, because I, I don't, I've never, I haven't owned any Nintendo systems in a very, very, very long time. So, I've never been able to play it in the past, nor present day. But, uh, I just like it's aesthetic. Like, the little leaf, obviously, like, kind of, um, Breath of the Wild kind of inspired. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just like her on a raft and just, like, almost like that mario uh odyssey you know thing of like oh how with cappy he could possess animals she's kind of got that as well uh no signature mustache but you do see like the uh flower okay we've seen this game before but this is just kind of giving us a little bit more of just kind of like this like nice as some people would say like wholesome like you know just kind of adventure game it seems like it probably could have a darker side like because it's like oh yeah beware of this particular person i guess who they were referencing as like the main antagonist like what the nature of the story is why she has this particular power i don't know it kind of reminds me a little bit of like moana meets zelda to a certain extent um with a lot of just like certain elements because it almost seems like just kind of like i said adventures and it seems like there might be kind of almost like that pirate element to it as well it just it just seems like a pretty like like nice just fun game adventure games this next section is pretty much going to be the marvel section uh first and foremost there's marvel's guardians of the galaxy which we've obviously uh seen showcased beforehand um obviously i want to say it was at like a3 uh square enix did a more in-depth like in like what 15 or so minutes on like gameplay this was this one and more was in particular was a story trailer so giving us more a taste and feel for it. obviously like i'm not the most well-versed marvel person so there's a lot probably getting thrown at I'm like i don't 100 know what that is but still it's like it's whatever i mean i think it's like most people felt like that when it came to the guardians movies like i don't know what i mean some people know the general stuff but they're like i have no idea who these this misfit of losers are so um but honestly, it just, it, you know, just a Marvel game, and it, it looks pretty dope. Um, 
what I did notice in like kind of like some of the gaming sections they showed off in this one, it seems like there might be ship sections uh, just based on like the two or three seconds we saw. It kind of reminds me of the gummy ship section, specifically ones from Kingdom Hearts 3. Like when you're like just going between worlds, kind of that open world like traversing, like it reminds me of that. I'm curious, are those going to be full-blown sections like that? That's just how you get from planet to planet. Will it kind of be like Kingdom Hearts 3 in a regard of like, yeah, you go to these enemies and you basically start like your like battle missions or something like that. So will there be like flight battles and stuff like that? Or is it just purely transportation? Like, will there be stuff you can do in space? Uh, I'm curious. Like I said, it seemed like it might be a gameplay section, but once again, it was only like two or three seconds in the trailer. So uh, they wanted to kind of go down like, like gummy route specifically, Kingdom Hearts 3 gummy route, because I think Kingdom Hearts 3's gummy ship is like the best gummy section amongst the three games. Uh, it's the one I probably definitely put the most time into because I, well, two and three I put the most time into, but I feel like I, I really went like above and beyond exploring obviously with three because it being a little like open worldish in certain regards so i'm curious how they ultimately handle that but other than that just like you know like i said we've seen gameplay this was more so about story so some marvel stuff winked nod pointed to uh little bits i do know and i've seen popped up in other stuff but it just, it just seems really interesting playing the guardians that that's all just kind of being able to kind of play them yourselves and uh once again, I, I, I've never talked about it, but I think it is such an interesting thing of like, right, you only play Star-Lord, but you have command and control over the other characters. It's very like Persona-esque in certain regards, like an original P3 in certain regards, because that's the first game that comes to my mind where like you only control one character and the other characters are kind of automated. So it's, you kind of, you know, it's, it kind of reminds me of that in that regard. So I just think that's kind of fascinating. I mean, other games obviously do that too, where it's like, oh, you, but like you can never control any other character but Star-Lord. Whereas other games, it's like, oh, you're controlling this one character, or other characters do their own thing, but then the moment you switch to him, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, in this case, you can't switch at all. But I just think that's such an interesting um, aesthetic and choice to kind of go, I don't have a problem with it. I'm sure people will, because it's like, oh, I want to play, a, you know, so it, it could be an issue in that regard, but it wouldn't be for me. So it just... I don't know, it just, it looks dope and I'm excited. Like I said, continuing the Marvel train, we have Marvel's Wolverine, which just came out of nowhere. I had, you know, I don't keep up with video game news, so I didn't even know this was a thing. This is being made by Insomniac, who made the, well, uh... Uh, God, uh, Marvel Spider-Man game, so that's pretty dope. Obviously, it was just a cinematic trailer, but just knowing they're working on, on a Wolverine game is pretty dope. Because the question that's kind of popped up is like, so what, like, is it going to be as open world as Spider-Man? Spider-Man being open world makes sense because it's Spider-Man. Will they necessarily do that with uh, Wolverine, or will it be more, um linear in certain regards because i mean i think you could still make up for like you can almost like well like wolverine could be like riding around on a bike so that could just be like your way to get around town and stuff like that but i mean whether or not they i don't know I, it'd be interesting to see if they did decide to go full-blown open world-esque in that regard uh either way just knowing that they're working on a wolverine game it's pretty dope i mean obviously like the gameplay for spider-man is awesome so like you just incorporate that with wolverine skill i mean it's gonna be interesting like to see like how uh his this fighting style gets incorporated kind of in that style like what what similarities will they bring over to the wolverine game and what will they shift to make it very unique to his fighting style you know because i think the uh the spider-man games do a really good job of emulating like that feel of like spider-man or just like how weird and like how acrobatic their fighting styles are you know and speaking of spider-man we get like our cinematic trailer for like marvel spider-man 2 which then you're hearing a voiceover you're like wait they go in craven the hunter which i'm like that alone is dope and sick just because well first and foremost it makes me think of like i'm curious like will they handle it kind of like the taskmaster um, taskmaster stuff in the first one where it, like granted he was just a side mission but you'd make this like the main overarching thing but i like i think be pretty interesting if like there's certain points in a game where like craven just pops out of nowhere kind of like how oh, you could be going along and then taskmaster will like wrap you up and then like bam you do a whole taskmaster thing but like what if you did that but like it's periodic points throughout the game he will just randomly attack you at certain points and completely catch you off guard like you know i mean it makes perfect sense he's the hunter you know so i think that'd be very interesting and it's a very interesting aesthetic um, interesting timing too considering like once again it's that conversation about you know what uh, Spidey villains exist which ones didn't exist at that point in time uh, obviously like his whole story of spoiler the first game is Peter 
you know, the origins of Doc Ock in that particular case. In that continuity, obviously, Norman hadn't become the Green Goblin yet, that type of thing. So, that was interesting, but, like, uh, it's interesting timing, too, because, like, Miles is a thing, which that also leads into the conversation of, like, how is that going to work in this? Like, is it going to be, like, are you going to pass the torch back and forth? Like, you play some stuff as Spidey, like, half the game is Spidey, half the game is Miles. Are you going to bounce back and forth? Are there, like, are there, like, kind of like in the first game, like, there's the Mary Jane sections, but instead of that, it's going to be Miles sections, uh, which there were Miles sections, but obviously he was just Miles with tech, not Miles, you know, Morales, Spider-Man, yeah, you know? So I'm curious to see how they handle that. Will it be, like, kind of almost like co-op, like, you could make those sections, like, co-op, the game co-op in general, or would it just be, so, like, if you're playing by yourself, like, it'll be, like, the, the, uh, the game controlling the character, um... I, I, I'm really curious, like, how they're going to balance that, like, balance, like, trying, I'm sure, I don't, I trust them enough to, like, give, like, both Peter and Miles enough screen time, I'm not worried about that, I'm just curious, like, how they're going to handle that gameplay-wise, maybe there's some news out there, um, I haven't really read up on a lot of this stuff, so I'll probably include annotations that might answer some of the questions I might be having about certain, uh, some of this stuff, but, uh, or maybe I just kind of put in the comments down below, I don't know, um, but that's just definitely going to be interesting to see how they, uh, showcase that. Uh, but it's obviously not just Kraven we're getting, we're also getting Venom too, which I think is so interesting because it's like, right, these three spider, like, you know, while Kraven's kind of doing his thing, uh, which that's definitely going to be interesting, like, because eventually, because he's looking for a challenge, obviously, it's like he's never found anything, it's like, we, one of you be the one, and then it talks, and then Venom's like, we will, so it's like, well, we know in this continuity, Harry had the symbiote last, so is he going to be the Venom in this continuity, will Flash eventually, uh, get not flash uh eddie get venom in this like like i said i'd assume it's because i think just to make the story more personal because sometimes in some cases like it depends on the continuity. because i want to say like spectacular spider-man the tv show uh the cartoon uh peter and um eddie were like grew up they were besties like you know so they had that connection so when him being venom it hit home so making it harry does make it harder for peter because like when he finds out like wait harry you know wait, Harry, Harry's his enemy, like, it's probably a lot of the game he's not gonna know, so it's like, right, he already had to go through this, like, fighting, like, his mentor, Doc Ock, and, like, seeing him kind of descend and become the villain he did, and not being able to do anything about it, and it's like, here's my, what, here's my best friend, and I can't do anything about it, you know, that's probably gonna be a big twist and reveal, like, when that's dropped, so, once again, like, what other villains are we gonna get, like, you know, will Norman become Green Goblin in a means of trying to stop Harry from going on a rampage as Venom, if that's the right, like, a lot of that, I mean, I mean, they do have, like, the black suit, like, the Spider-Man logo, and then, like, the black background, so it's like, is he gonna get Venom at some point in time, like, you know, I mean, will Kraven get it at some point in time, too? like, that's gonna definitely be, uh, really interesting to ultimately see what they kind of do in that regard. Uh, that, uh, which I'm very excited. Obviously, it's a 2023 episode as well, off, which I'm like, I'm fine with that. Take it as long as you need to. I'm, I'm so excited for that. That's going to be freaking awesome. And then finally, we have God of War Ragnarok, which was pretty dope. Obviously, Atreus, a little older, a little deeper voice. Obviously, the actor who plays him, Sonny's getting older. So, of course, that's going to get reflected in the character as well. We don't know how much time has passed between, like, uh, God of War as people refer to as God of War 2018 um but um how much time is play uh, but we do see like obviously like winter is kind of coming winter is coming type of situation right but you see them like on like wolves or dogs like like on um them dog or wolf sledding across like the lake because it's frozen at maybe at maybe in certain sections or at certain points in the story because maybe like as the game progresses you go through different um different seasons but it, i mean because the winter cold is probably related to like obviously like ragnarok coming uh obviously we see freya attacking you at one point in time obviously she made it clear she's coming after you for what happened with Baldur, and it's like obviously for kratos he doesn't want to fight her he doesn't want to kill her it's just like he he thought what was he did what he thought was necessary and it's like you know him actually giving Boulder a chance, and it's like we have to, we have to be better. We need to do better, be better, and you know, it's like you know, it, it wasn't his, it wasn't his right to do that. So where him and uh, Freya's story, like, is her beef going? Just will she also feel that way towards Atreus? Because even Atreus was like, no, we saved her life. Like, why is she so pissed at us? It's like, right, we killed her son. Like, 
any mother would feel that way. Obviously, Kratos has a very complicated family situation. He does, like, when it comes to, like, oh, whole killing father things, which Atreus doesn't know about that being a thing of, like, right. That prophecy being like, oh, is that supposed to be Atreus kills you? Or is it that, oh, I'm going to die? I think it'd be more impactful, like, no, Atreus is going to end up killing me and absorbing my godhood. And that's part of his story, like, his full growth into Loki. Um, I wonder how they play that up. Like, the you know, Loki being the god of mischief but it's also like right we have our own images of what loki is not just marvel obviously that's going to like pollute a lot of people's minds about what loki is uh but also you know even before then like just what you know of loki from just typical norse mythology what i'm only like slightly knowledgeable on some uh norse mythology like obviously most of the norse mythology i, I i'm aware of comes from like you know god of war 2018 so that's definitely going to be interesting um Obviously, it seems like we're getting more, like, particular... Maybe it's not going to be multiple towns, but at least, like, one hub town. Because we see at one point they go, and, like, there's other people around. And we see Sindri and Brock. So that's probably going to be, like, your main hub, which is going to be interesting. Because God of War has never really been known for, like, talking to NPCs. Because Kratos is like, yeah, the only NPCs you'll see are, like, the people that are running for their lives that he killed in, like, the OG, like, God of War. That's about it. Uh, I, I'm speaking because that's the only like OG God of War I played. I've never played two or three, like any of like the original ones. Um, my only experience was, was with one. Um, so there's that. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Obviously, they do a really good job of also showcasing like obviously the combat and stuff like that which i'll get to in a second but obviously he's using still the leviathan axe as well as the blades of chaos which i think speaks so many volumes the fact is that you decided to never put those back the fact is that you kept them out like the remind i guess as i like, write you kind of faced your past so you know it's like right i need these weapons to protect my son in case because there's enemies that the leviathan axe just won't work on and I, my bare fists aren't going to be enough so I, i'm curious um, what's going to happen on that front? Because I like what I was saying is like they those are the two weapons you get along with technically Atreus being a weapon in his own right, being the bow and arrow, and plus like the magic he has, uh, which we get showcase of like that. Like because obviously he could summon like the birds and the wolves. I want to say couldn't he summon boars as well? But obviously we see him kind of summon like a deer and he rides on top. And I was like, that's pretty sick. You definitely uh, kudos for showing that off. That's awesome. But. um other than that, uh, the point I was making is like, before I keep going on these tangents, uh, they did a good job of not showcasing like whether or not he gets another set of weapons. Because uh, he got quite a few like different ones over the course of like, I mean, once again, my own experience is like the original God of War. I know he got a handful, like, but maybe like two and three, he got different ones. So I'm curious what other weapons he'll get. Because I think that's going to be interesting starting off with like a massive move set like that. Because it's not just the Leviathan that's like I said, you got the Blades of Chaos as well. Obviously, we got some cases of that like new uh move sets new moves with the leviathan axe the blades as well as um the shield uh that's just going to be pretty uh dope and awesome uh in its own right but obviously just a continuation of the story of just like the budding heads between atreus and his dad you know it's just kind of like atreus kind of wanting to find out more about what he is but it's like right but what if you know Kratos having been through everything that he's been through, kind of being the cautionary tale, like, maybe we shouldn't all be all about war and battle. Like, maybe, you know, maybe there's more to this. But then Atreus is like, what if mom wanted this? It's like, you don't know what your mother wanted. Neither one of us does. Uh, but also, like, Kratos has a better understanding of what the future holds because it's like, obviously, like, she knew the entire time what uh Faye knew the entire time where their rover is going to take them how does it all going to play out because she already knew about like what that um wall showcase once again atreus is none the wiser about it but uh i'm interested to see uh you know what new because it seems like we're going to be potentially in the same world because obviously they're they're back home so that seems like that's going to be a general area but like i said there's new areas as well probably going to like some of the realms that were like dlcs like maybe you dive a little deeper into those realms in this game i don't know we do see like a little section like where him and atreus are running and you see like one of, i want to say it was like i want to say it was it was a dark elf which i'm like okay so maybe we'll pick up their story because there's like because you went to get the light of alpha I and mean, you just kind of bounce it's like I, we have no interest in this but like maybe like all the realm but ragnarok is like all the realms going to war isn't it i mean it's it's the kind of end of everything but i'm like i'm curious is that supposed to be like 
like they kind of have to go back to that realm and it's like right like things have kind of progressed badly because we didn't interfere you know kratos was just adamant about like oh, let's not interfere that's their issue we don't know both sides we only see one side of a war there's two sides to every story um like i said what other gods will get to see i'm curious like because it's an interesting thing when you think about the original like god of war it's like god after god after god after god as people kind of talked about once again i haven't played the later ones but it's like oh you're killing gods left and right you're meeting gods left and right or kind of getting powers from them in the first one the only gods you interacted with are thor's kids um the ones that you end up killing uh freya and boulder and Thor making his appearance at the end. That's about it. Obviously, they showcased that scene. Uh, so that must be like the opening to God of the, this next game. It opens with that. And then like maybe like Kratos gets his crap pushed in. And it's like him and uh, Atreus are on the run, like trying to hide. And they've been on the run for a couple years. Maybe that's what that's implying. Or maybe he straight up kills Thor. I, I don't know. Maybe it's like you go a while never finding out what happens and then eventually get to a point in the story like, all right, let's fill you in on what happened when Thor rolled up, you know? So are we going to get a lot of gods? Is Freya and um, Thor going to be the main ones you interact with? Like, is Odin going to make an appearance at all? Like, is he going to be the, the stinger of this game? I don't know. It's definitely going to be uh, really interesting to see kind of uh, what the story is of this God of War and like what other surprises they have in store. Uh, obviously, I, I was about to leave it out. The whole tear situation was pretty dope. Which someone did point out. It's like, oh, got both of his hands. Which I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was like typically, typically part of his story. I'm only aware of like the missing hand thing because of American Gods. That's the only reason why. But I didn't know it was like both of his hands. I thought it was just like one. But someone referenced both of his hands being gone. I was like, oh, that sucks. But it's like, oh yeah, Tear's alive and well. So uh, obviously you spend a lot of time in the first game talking about him. I mean, God of War meets God of War. Uh, which this could be potentially like some original thoughts. Like, because I remember, uh, I want to say the Super Best Friends had talked about it when they were doing their LP of... Uh, god of war 2018 was like the whole conversation about like original plans that kratos was going to meet different versions of himself across the other pantheons uh so like he is kind of meeting the norse version of himself the norse god of war so it's like we could be potentially still going down that route to a certain extent i don't know this could be the opening stage or act for that but I'm really, really excited uh, to see what this next God of War is all about. Obviously, that's just kind of all I want to talk about. Obviously, like, these are some of the things I'm interested in. Maybe what I was interested in, none of it appealed to you. Maybe some of it did. I'd love to know, like, what was the thing that was a standout to you? What are you most excited about? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I think for me, I'd probably say marvel spider-man 2 and probably that forespoken game are probably the things i'm like the most excited about just because I, i'm i am who i am so that's why i mean i'm the spider-man mega fan that i am but also like forespoken just because like yeah that's right up my alley because it's just like you know once again it's from the it's like a, a square game because i'm a square fanatic it's a square enix fanatic as well but also um I just like the aesthetic and stuff like that. Once again, knowing also specifically the 15, Final Fantasy 15 squad is uh, behind that as well. So, But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe. Little light to the fullest. Enjoy it. Good day and good night.